I don't need to tell you house prices are spiralling and nowhere more than London, where they've soared by more than 18% in some areas. The average property now fetches almost half a million pounds. It's left to those lucky enough to have the cash to chase any available homes. Oxford professor Danny Dawling says housing has now become the defining issue of our times. We'll hear more from him in a moment. But first, to a bidding frenzy which is going on right now in East London. And our culture and digital editor, Paul Mason, is there. Paul. John, um, in this estate agent's window, two bedroom flats, there's none going for less than half a million pounds. And all night people have been queuing up around here to place sealed bids uh, on properties they're not even allowed to see. Uh, that's how crazy it gets uh, when you have a house price bubble. It's ruthless and it's just, you know, you you, you don't know whether or not you're going to be successful or not. I mean, like, there was a guy walking down the street and he said, you know, what's going on here? And it's, there's a house for sale in London. That is, that is it, causing a queue, <laughs> trying to get somewhere. It's just impossible. It's absolutely ridiculous. Considering this was the scum of the East End not so long ago, and uh, not so far back, it's where they try to hide all the Jews and Bengalis. And now it's worth a fortune. What is it doing to local people? Pissing them off, really. Are you finding it easy to buy? For no way. No? <laughs> no way. What do you do? Uh, I'm a manager of a restaurant. And how do you, where do you, what kind of housing do you live in? Uh, rented accommodation now. Uh, then I'm going to move back with my mum because I can't afford the rent anymore. <laughs> And this is the big and largely hidden division among young people, whether you have access to this or you don't. I've been speaking today to a man who thinks he has the answer, Danny Dawling of Oxford University. We still call these places council estates. In fact, much of Britain's public housing stock is now privately owned and rented out. The average house price here in Hackney is half a million pounds and Oxford geography professor Danny Dawling thinks it's killing our economy. What's the problem is well, the first thing you notice here is where is the children? This is half term. Where are the kids? There are no kids here anymore. Why? Why? Because of the kind of people who can now afford to buy some of these flats. Um, are young professionals and they don't have kids and they would want a larger house if they had children. So people who bought these ex-council flats yeah. are betting that their value will always go up. Are they right? Uh, for a very long time values have always gone up but they can't carry on going up and up and up. Why not? Because we're not getting richer. <laughs> the country as a whole is getting poorer. Um, it, OK, if more and more of the world's super rich come to London and we have quite a lot of them already, it can go up a bit more. The ratio of house prices to average earnings in London is now back to its all-time high of seven times earnings, with hotspots developing in other cities. It's all being fuelled by record low interest rates for savers, with many people now using property to do what their pension pot used to. You don't blame private landlords for what's happening, do you? No, no, I don't, I don't blame private landlords. We're so fractionalised in our different interests in housing that we can't come together to see that we're creating a problem for all of us. And it's a kind of lack of national imagination. And part of the reason for that is that we've become a more fragmented society. In many other OECD countries where the gaps between the rich and the poor are less, people are able to make better political decisions for the good of the entire society. So what you're really saying is that a politician would have to say, I am going to suppress house prices. Yes. And suppress rents. Yes. Yep. And what politician's going to do that? Because, but th these are the largest parts of the cost of living crisis. The solution, he says, is to give tenants the same rights they have in other countries. Rent controls, long-term tenure, fewer tax breaks for landlords. A normal European regulated rental sector is not asking for very much. That makes housing less profitable for landlords, which means that they're less keen to carry on buying at these very high prices, which means that other young families can actually begin to buy housing again. In part, the bubble's being fuelled by the government's help to buy scheme. Figures released today suggest a quarter of a million people have been squeezed out of the housing market by the price rises since it started. Past experience suggests it can't go on. The kind of society that's produced that is one that's fooled for a short amount of time. Whenever this has happened before, it's been one of the indicators that it's not going to carry on forever. You can't make money out of nothing. 
but knowing the British housing market will probably die trying. Paul Mason reporting.